Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The little treat box die makes the most adorable little treat boxes, as the name says. But today we're gonna to use it in a completely different way. We're gonna create a box that has an opening at the top and it's gonna be filled with wonderful gift tags for the holidays. Now, if you've looked at the die in the catalog at all, you're probably wondering, how are you gonna get tags out of that? Well, I'm excited to show you how. And I've got some great stamping tips for you today as well. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and next to it, click that small bell icon. That will send you notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube, as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. This is the little treat box die that is in the current mini catalog. You'll be able to find it here on page 70. It makes the most adorable little treat boxes, great for all different occasions as well as the holidays. But I like to show dies in another way other than their intended purposes, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. The dies can be purchased as part of the bundle with the coordinating little treats stamp set. When you buy in a bundle, you'll be able to receive both of the products at a 10% savings, but of course they are offered individually as well. I've taken the treat box die and I've gone ahead and I've die cut one from Knight of Navy cardstock. Now I wanna show you how this works just the way it is. So that if you're looking to make favors, you can see how quick and easy these are to create. No glue or adhesive is required to put this together. It's already die cut and it's even scored for you. So these go to the inside and then these make the top and bottom of the interior of the treat box. When you bring them together, they're already notched for you. So all you have to do is just connect them here and here, one on each side. And then you'll bring the sides up to create the treat box. The intended closure is to go ahead and place some ribbon through here and tie this shut. So like I said, you don't need any glue or adhesive. Super cute on its own, but I decided to change this up for today. I also decided I wanted to cover these areas here with designer series paper. So let's talk about how I did that first. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna disassemble the box because it's gonna be a lot easier to add those extra layers here when the box is flat. This is the brightly gleaming designer series paper. Do you see the beautiful copper accents on here? One side has a very generic pattern so that you can use it all year round and one side is themed. And this is very indicative of all the designer series papers with Stampin' Up. I found that if I cut this into a two and one quarter inch strip, it's going to fit the die just for a panel perfectly. So here is the die itself, and you'll see that I laid it here. This is going to ensure that I don't waste any designer series paper or cardstock because all I need is this area here. I passed it through my die cutting machine once, which left me with this. And you're gonna see there's a small score line here at the bottom from this area. Because my paper has a direction, I actually passed it through a second time for the other side to make sure that when those sides came up that they would be an equal pattern on both ends. Once it's die cut, you may have to trim a little bit from the sides, but that's really easy to do with your scissors. And you're gonna see that there's a score line here which was intended for the bottom of the box. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that away, but I'm gonna do it after I adhere it because I wanna share a tip with you. I'll be using my silicone craft sheet to protect my work surface. Liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it, which means it's gonna keep this nice and sticky free. Because I want to use liquid glue, because it's gonna give me a little shimmy room to align these scallop tops, let's go ahead and do that first. I've got my liquid glue here, and I like to get it started to make sure that it's flowing well. And since this is the area that I wanna cover, the easiest way is to actually lay the glue here versus the designer series paper, since this is a little bit longer than what we're going to need. So I'm gonna pick up the tip, and I'm gonna add a little bit here, because this glue is very, very strong, and you don't need very much. I'm also gonna make sure that I don't work too closely to the sides because I don't want it to ooze out. Once the glue has been applied, I'm gonna go ahead and mimic this by laying the designer series paper on the top. I'm gonna pick it up and just make sure that it's as equal as possible and that all the little scallop holes align. And then I'm gonna press that in place. I'm gonna let that dry for just under a minute. Now, while it's drying, let's go ahead and let's work on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that little crease back so I can see this area as well. And I'm gonna add glue here, just like I did on the other side. The glue here on the silicone craft sheet will turn opaque. And then once it's dry, you can simply rub it right off. Now that these two panels are dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fold the bottom of the box and I'm gonna fold it flat. And you're gonna see the excess of what we don't need here. I'm gonna make sure that I fold these other panels up and out of the way. 
I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to use that cardstock base as a guide to trim away what I don't need. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do the exact same thing now on this side. So I'm going to make it nice and flat, move the panels out of the way, and then I'll trim. Now that our panels are in place, we're going to do the exact same thing we've done before by reassembling the box. So I'm going to go ahead and add these notches together. These are now going to come up to the inside. Typically, I would not adhere these flaps, but I am today for this project. So I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue here to those areas. So I'll do one side again. I'm not going to work too closely to the edge and then we'll press that in place. I like to lay it down on my work surface. I just stick my hand inside with a couple fingertips and just rub that down in place. And then we'll do the same thing now on this side. We have the box created. Let's go ahead and work on the tags. Now I have six tags to share with you, one of which I'm gonna be demonstrating with you. This is an additional two and one quarter inch wide strip of very vanilla cardstock. And I chose this because it coordinates with the designer series paper. And just like we did with that designer series paper panel, I am going to die cut several of these in order to create the tags. Now you're gonna see that one strip is actually gonna create two tags because we are gonna cut these when we're all finished. So I went ahead and I created this to so I went ahead and I passed these through my stamp and cut and emboss machine for a total of three times to equal six tacks. And that has left me with this. I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors. This is a nice long tip pair of scissors, which is great for a project like this. And I'm gonna trim off that excess from the die. You'll also see here in the center, those score lines that were intended for the bottom of the box. That is where you're going to cut this. Now you can either use your scissors or you can use your trimmer. I'll take my scissors and I'll cut right on that score line. And that's gonna leave us this perfect tag. I did that same process for all six of my tags and this is where we're gonna do our stamping. On a scrap piece of very vanilla cardstock, I decided to pull out this little gift box from the coordinating stamp set called Little Treats. The one reason I'm loving this stamp set is there are literally images for all different occasions from Christmas to birthday, as well as engagement or wedding favors. I knew I wanted my box to have two different colors, so I want to teach you a stamping technique. We're going to turn the stamp face up on our work surface. I'm choosing two complementary colors of dye-based markers. I have Night of Navy and Old Olive because they coordinate with the designer series paper. This is the fantastic part of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. I like to use the lightest color first, and I want to give you a tip about these markers. Although they are dual sided, you'll want to use the brush tip for this because you don't want to use that chisel tip, which is more like a pen, which can actually damage the rubber. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that cap and I'm going to turn the stamp to make it easier for my hand. I am not going to scribble color on using the tip because I want to protect that chisel tip for future projects that I wish to color in. So I'm going to use the underside of my marker. So I'm going to color the areas of the stamp that I want in old olive ink. You're gonna to see too that I prefer to pull the color towards me because I can see where I'm going a lot better. I'm gonna work in all the old olive areas first, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fill in with the Knight of Navy. I find by starting with the lightest color first, if I have a little overage on the other side, the darker color will easily cover it. This is the Knight of Navy marker, and again, you're gonna see me using the side of the marker. Once that's been inked, you're gonna to need to huff on it with your breath. I call that the Darth Vader technique. The moistness of your breath is going to keep the stamp moist, which is going to allow you to have a beautifully colored image. There's also a die for the images that are part of the stamp set, and there's one here for the gift box. And I took the liberty of doing that right before you joined me, which left us with this. I have our tag here, and I'm gonna flip that box over, and I'm gonna add a dimensional to the back side. I'm gonna place one here near the top and I've got another here for the bottom. I love to use my take your pick tool to help me remove those paper backings. One end has a putty tip, which is great for picking up sequins and small pieces of cardstock. And the other end, I've attached the interchangeable paper piercing tool attachment, which helps me pull off those paper backings with ease. I'm gonna add my gift box on an angle down here in the lower right corner. I've pulled out the Knight of Navy ink pad, which coordinates again with this project and the to and from that are part of that stamp set. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink those up and I'll add those here to my tag. As part of the die set, there's an adorable scalloped circle with a really trendy stitched inside. 
I die cut one of those and I decided I wanted to add a greeting for the outside of the box. I've mounted the words especially for you and I'm going to ink those up in the Knight of Navy ink and I'm going to stamp those here. Let's go ahead and add the greeting to the front of the box. I'm going to flip that over and I'll use several dimensionals here on the back side and we'll remove those paper backings. This now is going to get adhered here to the center of the front of the box. I left an area here at the top open so that I can add a small bow. This beautiful basket weave copper trim ribbon is going to accentuate those foils perfectly. I'll be using a glue dot in order to add it. The glue dot is here and I'd like to press the center of my bow on top of that. And again, I'll use that take your pick tool to help me lift it because it's rather small. And then we'll tack that down here above the words. Let's finish off this tag and then I'll show you the others. This old olive ribbon comes from the Ornate Garden Suite. I've cut about seven inches here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a single tie and just to make sure that it's secured, I'm gonna go ahead and make a double knot out of this. And then we'll go ahead and trim up the ends. So I have one of our six tags for our box, but let me show you the others that I created. This tag and this tag both use the little tiny detailed dies that are part of this die set that I have absolutely fallen in love with. They're here. Not only does it die cut them, but there are beautiful detailed embossed areas. These are added perfectly using a glue dot. To add the strings, all I did was use the pen side of my markers and drew them right on the tag, stamped my to and from. The designer series paper that I used here has a great assortment of designs and I added a small strip of designer paper here at the bottom using a little bit of liquid glue. So that's two more for a total of three. This one, you can see I used the stamped image from the stamp set. This one, I used the Santa hat from that stamp set. Again, a little bit more designer paper. And my last one actually uses the same method of two-tone stamping as I've done here on the gift box. I inked up the Ho 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 in the Night of Navy and the Merry Christmas in the Old Olive. Since those greetings are all together on one stamp, I was able to ensure to get two different colors. Which one of today's tags is your favorite? I would love to know. Would you leave me a comment below? You'll be able to find the little treat box die and the coordinating stamp set in the current mini catalog. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. If you've enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to seeing you with me next time. Have a great day. 